Today, we have with us one of the movers and thinkers in the social media landscape. Mr. Kiruba Shankar is the CEO, founder of Business Blogging Private Limited, a social media consultancy. He also co-founded F5 Technologies and was previously an associate director at Suleka.com. Kiruba has authored four books till date, the latest being Unconferences, because the audience is more intelligent than the speaker. He is the Indian ambassador for TEDx, programs across India. Business World magazine ranks his blog Kiruba.com as one of India's top blogs. He also co-founded the Knowledge Foundation, a not-for-profit organization that focuses on knowledge sharing and open access. He has been teaching wikis as part of his social media course in universities since 2003. Interestingly, Kiruba is a rowing champion and has captained the SIFI rowing team to four championship titles. Enough said. Now brace yourselves for a journey through digital space. Please put your hand together for Kiruba Shankar. Thank you. So since the last time I came and spoke here till now, I've saved enough money for a haircut. Um, so one, uh, the talk isn't about digital space. I decided to do away with it. Quite honestly, that's what I do for a living. And that's what I do day in and day out. And quite honestly, you hit my head. <coughs> all, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm till up here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going, to be, I'm going to talk to you about some of the life lessons that I've learned. One of the lectures that really touched me very much is the last lecture by Randy Posh. How many of you haven't seen it? Randy Posh, the last lecture. So I'll give you a quick heads up. In Carnegie Mellon University, they have a lecture series called The Last Lecture, where they invite, they invite really talented people to come and give the talk of their life. And they say, hey, if you only had the next few days, next few weeks to live, talk about subjects that really matters most for you. Coincidentally, Randy Posh, a professor there, had cancer. He only had a few weeks to live. And he truly, you know, when he came and gave the, the last lecture, it really was his last lecture, sort of. And so he gives, this, uh, he gives a talk about living the childhood dream. It's about... Uh, it's over a one hour talk. Do yourself a big favor. Go to YouTube and watch the entire talk. I did. And the part where I really had goosebumps, and I had tears in my eyes, and he ends his talk when he says, all this talk that I gave is not for you. It's for my three daughters. That way, when I die and go away, my daughters will look at this video and they'll learn from me. I have two daughters. And I don't know, something, you know, it touched a real chord in me. And I said, what, what would I do for my daughters? What are the kind of life lessons that I will instill in them? And that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm, going to, what I'm going to do to you now, talk to you now, are about the life lessons, the experiences, the inspirational people that I've met, things that have moved me, that I would tell my daughters is what I'm going to tell you. I'm a storyteller at heart. I can't do PowerPoint presentations to save my life. And it's post-lunch session. Right. So, um, but what I do is I do, I, I do make notes. And um, so as, as uh, one of the books um, that's nearly going to be published is this thing called Why the Audience is More Intelligent Than the Speaker. And I truly, truly mean it. So over the next what, what, half hour, you know, don't let me, let me be not the only one who's talking. Um, I'd love to hear um, ideas from you. Um, I'd love to hear inspirational stories, even if it's just two or three from you. It'll be great if you can, can do a kind of a collaborative talk. 
I'll tell you about instances number one. I visit Bangalore and I stay in a hotel. And I stay in a hotel and my room is on the seventh floor. So I walk up to the lift. I walk up to the lift and as soon as I walk in, I find a sticker that's stuck out there. And the sticker said, 20 years from now, 20 years from now, you will regret the things that you did not do more than the things that you did do. Apparently, it was said by Mark Twain, but it wasn't written there. It just, I remember my lift goes to the seventh floor, the door opens, and I distinctly remember just staring at that sticker with those words, for it made a very profound impact on my mind. And just before that, I was looking at a couple of guys with long hair. I said, man, you know, how awesome would it be if I can do that? And here I'm looking at the sticker that says, if I don't do this now, if I don't want to do things that I really want to do, what am I doing with my life? It's just a simple thing, a long hair. And that's how it began. You know, there's also another reason why it began. I go to my ancestral home in my village. It's called Retanai. Um, it's about three and a half drive from Chennai. And uh, you have these photographs of your grandparents, great-grandfather, grandfather, and it's so it goes. I look at those photos up there. My great-great-grandfather, my great-grandfather, grandfather, and then my dad is sitting here, and I see something common. All of them are half bald, <laughs> you know? And then it struck me, shucks, if I don't do this now, I'll never be able to do it. Anyway, so for me, I think that really was a defining moment. So anything that we want to do, I think, let's just do it now. Even if it means digressing from that big goals in life that we have, I think it's the small moments in life that really, really makes um, a big impression. That's what I would tell my daughters. Another second lesson that I learned that I truly found very useful in my life, and an easy way to succeed, do not go where the competition is high. Choose niche areas, specifically unknown areas, and see if you can, if you can be better at that. Which explains why I, I decided never to become an MBA student in Great Lakes or, or anywhere. So I now go and teach at IIM uh, Bangalore. Uh, it's just so much more easier to go and do the teaching job than the studying job. Agree, right? Yes. OK. Um, but I'll tell you two instances in my life um, which has really worked. Tonight, at 11 o'clock, I have a flight to Detroit. I'm going and visiting what's called this International Auto Fair the North American International Auto Fair, apparently the biggest auto show in the world. It's a, it's a free gig. I'm a freeloader. Ford decided to launch a couple of green cars, so they wanted a few bloggers, so they handpicked a few bloggers around the world. They said, would you like to come along? I think I thought for about half a second before I said yes. And, um, and they are flying me out there. So five days, all expenses paid. The interesting thing, and there are thousands, ten thousands of bloggers around India. If I had been just a blogger alone, I don't think I would have stood a chance because there are other people um, who do better job at blogging on automobiles. I do not blog about automobiles. 